Hello, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Emotions. Today we're talking about trust and the emotions behind trust. But as we get into it, it's much more complicated than that. My name is Anchin Texter. I am a licensed DEI trainer and consultant, and I'm uh, the creator of the Befriending series of courses. I have with me today Camilla Jorgensen from Denmark. She is also a licensed DEI trainer and consultant. Uh, certified body worker, and she's currently in school studying education and psychology in order to bring DEI concepts to people who grew up with emotionally immature parents. Man, isn't that all of us? <laughs> <laughs> Most of us, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I thought that we were going to start by talking about all the emotions behind trust, but I think that what we really need to start talking about is emotion shaming messages. <laughs> oh, yes. Do you have any examples? Because what we were saying that emotion shaming messages um, is is contributing to distrusting emotions when when we have our emotions shamed out of us. Yeah, like if you if you're told um, you can't feel your emotions or you shouldn't you shouldn't feel anger, shame, sadness, fear. Whew. What can you feel? I mean, yeah. you're essentially being told that you shouldn't feel what you're feeling, and that. Um, if you do that, you can't trust it. Oh. Like, like one example I think of is um, people who have been told, don't be so emotional. Oh, yeah. You know, when they're having emotions and really feeling them, maybe also expressing them. Don't be so emotional. Yeah. That's, I think that's a big one. Like, you shouldn't have all these emotions. You know, please put them away. That's wrong. And, and it's not wrong, it's natural for us to have emotions and also, of course, express them. Yeah. Or don't be so sensitive sometimes, that's also added. Like then you're overly sensitive because you have so many emotions. Or there's something wrong with you for feeling emotions. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, is that so many of us aren't taught how to listen to our emotions, how to regulate our emotions. Somehow we're just expected to know what to do with them as children. And the thing yes. is we learn from our parents, right? We're, we're watching our parents, our caregivers, our peers. How are they dealing with their emotions? How do, is a mirror for us, how we deal with them? And if our parents can't deal with them, right? If our parents are ignoring them or um, repressing or pushing them off onto other people, then we're gonna take on that, those habits. Yeah, yeah, because emotion skills are, something we learn. We're not born with knowing, you know, how to work with our emotions. It's something we work, and we learn through um, other people, how they, when they're teaching us. Right. Yeah, and then of course, the most important two people are our parents or our caregivers. Yeah, yeah. and if our, if our parents tell us messages about our emotions, such as, um, well, don't express anything you feel, <laughs> yeah, just don't express any emotion. Yeah, but it can also be very specific, you know, like, oh, don't cry, don't cry, you know, mm. and then you know people try and cheer you up and make you smile, and you don't have to be happy. Yes, you know? yeah, or don't and distract you from your feelings, you know, or you know, I'll give you something to cry about, um, yeah. or uh, you know, if you can't, if you can't smile then leave and go away i don't want to see you unless you have a smile on your face yeah I mean, or like um shaming people for being angry like go to your room if you're angry you know maybe a five-year-old or something is angry about something an injustice or boundary was violated and then you know they get the message that oh no, don't be so angry uh, you know take take a time out go to your room and then you the child just sits in the room alone and it's supposed to know how to regulate itself emotionally. So just calm down, you know. Right. Don't come come out until you're calm again. Uh, when in when in reality, uh, the way we learn to regulate ourselves emotionally is also through other people. Like infants, they are regulated by their parents' nervous system, and because uh, the, the adult know how to regulate at that point, you know. So the five-year-old is just sitting there, not learning skills on how to deal with their emotions or the anger in this example, right? Yeah. Oh, so frustrating. Well, I mean, I have a four-year-old and believe me, I'm living this right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is a girl who knows what she wants. <laughs> she doesn't get what she wants, man. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. So I've gotten uh, much better than I was in the beginning at sitting with her when she gets angry, when she has a tantrum. And uh, just reflecting back to her, yeah, I see that you're angry, that you're not getting what you want. And I've I've learned actually through Sharon Ellison's work. She has a book about um, working with kids. Mm. I've learned through her work really how important it is to say everything that's happening out loud, not as a narrative, but more as a, like a translation. Yeah, I see that you're really angry. Um, no, I'm not going to let you hit me because as a parent, it's important that I set clear and appropriate boundaries. So yeah. it's been a massive learning curve for me as well. I feel like in a sense, I have been parenting myself as well as her through this, yeah. through her childhood. Um, and, and I, you know, it's a big part because my parents were young when they had kids and they, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, they, um, they treated our, me and my siblings differently. <laughs> but it's so important uh, to, to do that with your children that you're mentioning now, because I think, for instance, what I, one thing I'm hearing you doing is you validate your child's feelings. Oh, yeah. uh, like in this it instance, anger. Sense. Like so, so when you have your feelings, your emotions validated, then um, at first of all, it, it creates like a resonance or like a one-to-one -one experience that it's right what I'm feeling. Like it's not wrong, or it should be called something else, True. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then it also creates like it. I think it helps the ego or the the psyche, you could say, develop a kind of like structure around. Okay, this is actually what I'm, when we put words to it, I mean, that then it's, it's kind of like structuring your experience. So it, it becomes sort of ordered in the mind that this is what I'm experiencing. Oh, it's anger. And also it's okay. You know, like it's, it's supportive in that sense. So I'm, I'm, and that in itself, I think, helps regulate it. That was my point. Yeah, no, but so, so you're making a really good point. Yeah. So I'm helping her name her emotion, right? So naming your emotions is probably the number one thing you can do to regulate your emotions. Being able to, to consciously name, oh, I'm feeling angry right now. Like, oh, that's the feeling of anger. Okay. And you can feel anger at different intensities. And that's a, that's a different chat I've had with other people. <laughs> um, so learning to recognize, learning to name those emotions in your body when you feel them. Oh, I am feeling irritated, which is a form of soft anger. I got this. Yeah. But also, so my job here as a parent is to, in a sense, validate her emotions and help her to, to know, oh, I'm having this emotion. It's okay that I'm having this emotion. This is normal and natural in this situation. This makes sense. I can trust my emotions. Yeah. And so, then, uh, uh, you know, people, people can also do that for themselves if they want to as adults like that, that that's also an, another way to develop trust in your emotions that you know you name the emotion correctly and and then you tell yourself it's okay to have it um, that it's not the same as you're going to let all your aggression out on the world and damage people it's that's not what it is it's, it's an element of helping yourself regulate your emotions. Okay.